What is up, everybody? Kaz Dan is on here again from Crafts Productions with a new Atari Dev Space video. And today we are joined by Jamil, the creator of Super Space Shooter 16. Jamil, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you, Kaz? I cannot complain. It's a pleasure to have you here. Tell uh, everybody who's watching right now a little bit about yourself, uh, what you do, you know, maybe a little bit of history about your development and so on and so forth. Sure, I'll, I'll give the uh, the high level here. So uh, yeah, my name is uh, Jamil, I uh, run JD Video Game Productions, uh, kind of recent computer science graduate. Uh, during COVID, I wasn't sure what to do with myself. So, uh, you know, started making games. It's been a, a dream of mine for a very, very long time. So nice. uh, that's how I got here, yeah. So uh, how long would you say you've been developing video games overall? It's a little tricky, but the straightforward answer, I guess there's a two-parter. So when I was like really young, I used RPG Maker. I don't really count it. It was like me being a teenager playing around. And then uh, recently I got into it pretty seriously. So I've been at it with Superstar Shooter 16 for about three years. And so is this the first game that you've published or have you published in the, you, so you, this is your first? Oh yeah. What are your intentions as far as publishing this game? Where do you want to see it go? I mean, are you thinking just Steam, Atari? Obviously, we're in Atari dev space, so we know it's going there. Oh, yeah. So where are you thinking about putting your game at? Uh, I've done a few things already. So I got it on Steam for Windows, Steam for Linux. Uh, I have it on the Microsoft Store. So that makes allows it to run on most Xbox consoles. Okay. And uh, the Windows Store, I can also do Windows for ARM, which is kind of up and coming. It's like using a cell phone processor to, to run Windows. I kind of want to get it onto VR someday. And you had some awesome suggestions, like uh, trying the Android TV and also uh, iArcade there. I looked into iArcade. That, that seems super cool. So a uh, little fun fact about me, and for those who are unfamiliar, I am, a, unfortunately... <laughs> I am a huge fan of Android gaming. Uh, I have been for a very long time. I own Ouya's and Google Chrome's. I've dabbled in NVIDIA products. And uh, I happen to be part of a lot of Android-based communities. And Android TV is lacking in the video game department right now. Uh, so they need substance and quality and stuff like that. Uh, I have 60 games on my Google Chrome account that I still play to this day. And I think seeing Superstar, I'm Super Space 15 <laughs> would be amazing. Just, just an opinion. Uh, well, go ahead go ahead i want to cut you off no oh, no i i think that was uh the the gist of it from my end i don't think i had too many other goals i would like maybe look at switch maybe look at playstation depends how much it costs but uh right. yeah those are a little lower down the list i got a feeling the switch is going to get replaced soon enough so yeah i definitely feel like the switch is uh getting to the point where it's so outdated it needs to come up uh i mean it's been out for what seven years seven yeah, years I think some, yeah, something along those lines. And I heard it was a little outdated when it came out even. So, yeah. It's... Right. So, now, uh, we are, of course, talking about this new game that you're developing. And we've mentioned already that you're going to be producing it uh, with Atari in mind. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, about that process and why you chose Atari. Yeah. So, I heard about the VCS you know, back in 2020 and there was all the, the turmoil and will it come out and this and that. And I kind of, as, as an indie dev, what you find out from the marketing and business side real quickly is that like all of these platforms like Xbox and Steam, they're just inundated with content. Like okay. there, there's so much on there, unless you really know what you're doing in terms of marketing and business development, uh, you're, you're just going to get lost in the sea of other video games. And in my case, I mean, I don't really have those skills all truth be told so seeing something like atari i realized that it's a bit of a niche and you know even if i'm not going to make a, a bajillion dollars on atari if people will at least play my game that's enormous to me like that's gigantic so yeah i i have to say that i do uh respect that mindset um there in some of the other interviews that we've done before here on atari dev space a lot of people have mentioned about how how you say, you know, the storefronts for like the big three are very inundated and flooded with so much content. It's hard to be seen in an ocean of games. Right. And I do feel like for like the niche markets like iArcade and Android TV and Atari VCS, for those who are a fan of it, the play date, for example, is also an alternative for people who want to make, you know, 16, 32 bit, you know, related games. And I, I definitely feel like there is a huge come up in the indie developer and indie market as a whole uh, with this year. 
So I think now is more of a stronger time to actually get your games thrown on these platforms while there is still chance to not be overshadowed by somebody else. Exactly. Um, I personally feel that your game, uh, and of course we'll play some uh, gameplay footage throughout this uh, interview here, but I personally feel that your game would do fantastic in an arcade cabinet. Uh, it gives me a lot of like reminiscence of, of things like Tempest and iRobot and, you know, just the colorful psychedelic in your face, you know, fast gameplay, which by the way, <clears throat> Um, I'm pretty positive that you are going to get a huge and positive reception on the Atari VCS. There's a lot of people here who love score chasers and loves the challenging game. Uh, let's talk about your dev logs, by the way. You've been essentially uh, along the way have been talking about its development and what goes into it and what you expect and what you want to change. Tell us a little bit like an abridged version about that. Uh, what episode are you on with that vlog? I'm on uh, number four, going to do number five in the next week or two. Um, basically, the the Coles notes are, you know, it's my first time doing that. Uh, I just, I know from the marketing side of things and getting, you know, community, getting engagement, it's, it's so hard. Oh, yeah. So uh, I just, I don't want to get lost, but I can also tell, you know, people are interested in the game, but I'm going to keep doing that because, you know, I've, I've heard of other games where the community was like, well, the developer wasn't communicating with us or we didn't know what was going on or this and that. The, yeah. the other thing, like something you've done for me that's absolutely huge is just getting a little bit of QA in before the launch. So, you know, if I get suggestions from other people in the community, I can't do everything that's suggested, but if people have really good ideas or things to help, then I, I definitely take it into consideration. And like, I, I do really appreciate the engagement. So, well, um, if I can interject for just a moment, I do want to uh, say that I appreciate the opportunity to be able to uh, play test your game before it launches. And I know some of you guys who are probably watching this are like, what? Kaz got a chance to test it? Yeah, I know. I know. It's it's just I got that swag. Well, the point the point is, is I uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I don't mind uh, play testing games for people and especially for the Atari VCS community. I mean, I'm willing to do it for free. It's something I really want to do. I personally want to get in on video game development at some particular point. And as we announced before, uh, I'm actually trying to produce my first game uh, in collaboration with Kahnemet from uh, Met Gun Games. So shout out to you, yeah. friend. You're awesome. But regardless, as far as playtesting, um, I guess we'll go ahead and say it here on video. I do have a friend coming by tomorrow to also test that game to give some product, uh, product notes as well. But awesome. let me ask you this. In regards to Super... Uh, Star Shooter, yeah. Super Star Shooter 16... Why is it 16? Like what, what okay. Are you 15? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the first 15 versions weren't very good. No, I'm just kidding. Um you probably noticed the visuals are kind of weird with the game, right? So the I've I've used a limited color palette. So I use this 16 as just kind of a way to keep the game constrained to, to keep it small. So my idea was like, there'd be 16 colors. That would mean I'd only need to make about 16 different materials in unity. I started off with like, Oh, I'll just do 16 levels, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe 16 enemies use that as like a guide to, to keep the thing in check. Uh, there's 32 levels now there's well more than 16 materials, but um, that, mm -hmm. that was the original thought. Give them a week, there'll be 128. We're going to jump from 16 to 32 and just completely skip 64, you know? Yeah, well, if, if you know, and this is the thing with the game, right? Like, I know it takes an hour to play. And if people want more, it's a matter of me putting more levels, more enemies, more songs is the, the big thing. Because, like, each level ends when the song ends, eh? Right. Yeah. Well, I definitely feel, uh, am I allowed to talk about, Oh, yeah, for sure, man. I forgot this tag was on this hat. I'm <laughs> so when I moved my head and it flopped. I like, um, you felt that? Yeah, I felt it. I was like, but anyway, all right, back on topic, back on topic. So I'm, is it okay for me to mention some of the stuff that we've already discussed about? Oh, what yeah. We added and, okay. Yeah, because this is the thing. I, I want to drive home the point. Like, it's a work in progress. And if there are people that have suggestions, like, don't be shy. I want to hear them. So. Okay. Well, you yeah. guys heard that in the comments. If you have suggestions on some of the gameplay footage or just a game in general, drop them in the comments. But so I, I briefly mentioned that I have uh, a fairly good amount of experience with, uh, you know, tunnel shooters and, uh, you know, just tunnel runners and stuff like that. Uh, you know, things like uh, Acid Trip on Ouya or Super Grid Runner and, you know, Tempest and, and so on and so forth. Um, I definitely I definitely would suggest that the first couple levels are just kind of Kind of like the tutorial base level, right? Like the first one, you know, you get introduced to what your power-ups are, what are your enemies, what's the objective, 
you know, and I feel like they should gradually increase, like, and then after the third level, just fucking, <laughs> I'll bleep that out. Yeah. Just freaking <clears throat> take three. We'll just slap them with it, you know. Yeah. Um, just slap them with the difficulty, you know, make them kind of feel like, oh yeah, this is easy. And then all of a sudden, okay, balls to the wall, let's go. You know what I yeah. mean? For um, sure. As one of the things that I still haven't been able to figure out. So I've, I've determined, you know, obviously there's some health, health power ups. Uh, there is some power ups that adds up to your score, like the ones that have like the thousand, you know, digits on it. Yep. And then of course you have your shields. Those are the three that I picked up on. The ones I couldn't really tell what they did was there was a, uh, look kind of like a, trapezoid or like a triangle or upside down seven a red one and then the other one oh oh that that's a random item that's a random anything item. yeah yeah it was red and yeah 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 so I the question mark doesn't look like a question mark gotcha. i couldn't tell what it was supposed to do and so i often found uh that i was trying to avoid it because i thought that maybe it was like a distraction right yeah so that's also something you could do is you could throw some dummies in there. You know, like you think it's a power up, but like if it's just a different color, don't go for it. You know what I mean? Like there gotcha. are people who are in the moment. But the 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 two drawbacks, and I won't say it's a drawback. So you have to either sacrifice your score or sacrifice your survival rate. So you find yourself either trying to avoid things or trying to go for the score. Now, I want to ask you, was that intentional or do you have a, a, uh, an intention to make that more balanced? What's your uh, what's your take on that? I've that's a thing I need to figure out through doing some more play testing of my own. Cause I've, I've always noticed this thing. You pointed it out to me. Like if you go real low down or to the top or just to the edges of the play field, mm -hmm. the enemies basically don't hit you. They can, they can still get you a little bit, but yeah. yeah so, I mean, those are kind of the safe zones. Uh, it wasn't intentional. It's kind of just the way things shaked out there, shook out. But uh yeah, and then for the high score chasing, honestly, I hadn't even contemplated it, but I realize now, like, I got to make all of that more balanced. And oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, Atari fans, they they love leaderboards. If they if they can compete and have any chance to be in a pissing contest with each other, they are going to. <laughs> Driller, watching. I'm calling you out. Let's go. I challenge you to Super uh, Star Shooter 16, but. Well, uh, I, I really feel like having that leaderboard system would be just an absolutely amazing feature. Uh, I'm not even saying make it exclusive. You can do it to like cross-platform, you know, score chasing or, you know, whatever. Uh, another idea that you could also do is you could add Atari exclusive content in it, you know, like uh, the occasional Fuji logo or I don't know, you could uh, have it like Mortal Kombat style where Nolan Bushnell's face shows up in the corner. When, you know, something <laughs> like that. Instead of smoke, you get Nolan Bushnell. Yeah, I, I like the Fuji one. And, and I've been thinking what to do with that if it becomes like a full restore health and shields or like a smart bomb just blows everything up or something. It, but it could be an all in one 5,000 points plus all health and full shield, you know, yeah. things like that, you know, and they can only maybe show up, ra randomize it. They show up randomly, you know, instead yeah. of just a straightforward thing, you know, those kind of things. Here's, here's a question for you. Yeah. What what are you expecting ultimately to get out of when you release this game? What do you want people to take away from it? Mm. Well, I mean, what, one thing, you know, I've, I've realized as I've gotten a little older is like retro's still cool and retro's oh. kind of always going to be cool. Right. Right. And uh, I, I, the, one of the big guiding things for me was this simplistic color palette that came out of like EGA, CGA games. I used, my dad had like a 286 when I was a kid and I played games on the big five and a quarter inch floppy disks there. And I haven't really seen anyone else do that reduced color palette aside from Jeff Minter. And like when I played through Polybius last year and Moose Life and it's like, okay, you know what, that, that was kind of what I was going for. And, you know, he did it his own way. I kind of, my thing doesn't really look 70s, 80s. It looks more like like 90s, like a reboot cartoon or something like that. But, uh, yeah. When you say reboot cartoon, are we talking about the 1995 series reboot? Yeah, yeah. You, you uh, remember that one? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, are you kidding me? I was a huge fan of that as a kid. I, the early, getting a little off topic here, but I have to speak volumes for this. So I have a passion and affinity for really weird, like FMV CGI, you know? Uh, Starship Troopers, The Roughnecks, which was unfortunately canned before the last four episodes, which really sucks. And then, of course, there was Reboot, and then there's all these really cool games on, like, the 3DO, like the Daedalus Encounter, and, uh, you know, the, and, uh, uh, 
uh, burn cycle on the CDI that took advantage of those really primitive 3D graphics. Lost Eden, I love Lost Eden. That's on both of those platforms. Uh, but I, I appreciate the blockiness and the fact that it's... Oh, here's a great example, actually. The Atari Jaguar, I wore, right? They took just a bunch of random shapes and made it into something, and it looks amazing. And the music and the score, and it really looks like you're in this like cybernetic uh, cyberspace type world where you're playing this like little space tank and you're shooting all the enemies and you got little green gushers jumping at you. Anyway, point is, I love the style of the game and I appreciate the fact that you were trying to go for that style because for me personally, that that houses a lot of nostalgia for me. So yeah. I'll give you props on that. Thanks, appreciate it. Um, what I'm trying to think here. So again, we try to do these interviews very candid. So sometimes uh, we're prepared on questions, but if there's something that you oh, want good. to say, I can build my questions from that. Let's try this. Um, yeah. Okay. So I think some of the some of the big things that kind of led development. Uh, one thing was like performance optimization. So yes, pretty early on, I had you know the VCS in mind, and eventually I noticed this you know Windows on ARM that that's even more challenging to develop for. Like that that one is that's a real hard one to uh, make games run smoothly on. But uh, yeah, I had performance optimization in mind from the start, and it's kind of been a little bit of an obsession of mine. Uh, I released on Xbox One through the Microsoft Store. That was really challenging to get running. But once I got that going, it, uh, things were real good. Okay. Uh, another guiding principle for this game, but I found I had to rein it in quite a bit, is like uh, just randomization. So the entire game is procedurally generated. You can kind of tell as you go. Uh, the narrator will say different things throughout the game. Uh, you could replay level one and you'll get different voice clips, you'll get different effects. Um, I had the music randomized initially, but I found that didn't sync up properly with the uh, audio visualization there. So things would be too dull or, or not bright enough. So th things like that were um, caused a bit of a challenge. So I still feel like I might have too much randomness. Actually, that's a good question for you. So uh, in your opinion, uh, you know, when the, the narrator, that, that robot, the evil robot AI starts speaking and all the items spawn in and enemies start spawning in, is that too chaotic or is it kind of okay, do you think? Honestly, I think it really depends on the player. Um, you could do, this could be an option. You could uh, leave that in the, uh, the settings where you adjust the sensitivity where players can either like tone down the Vox uh, in gameplay. So that way it's not so drawing and then the items popping up you know, you could give like a three second warning, but uh, I don't think that it's necessarily that bad per se, Cool, cool. cool. just something to explore. And one thing that I actually hadn't gotten around to explaining or, or uh, suggesting yet. So when, like I said, when you're trying to go for the score, you're trying to go for survival. There's, there's kind of like a lapse in what you're focusing on, especially for somebody like me that has like really high functioning ADHD, like my mind's here and suddenly there's a squirrel and then like, oh yeah, I got to do this too, you know? So yeah, yeah. you're playing and I'm focusing on, I'm just trying to survive. I don't even care about the score. And by trying to avoid all these things, I'm not realizing when I'm clipping things, right? Mm. Uh, and even though there's a sound effect that tells you when you hit something, I think once your life I, I think once your shield is depleted, I think you should have like a like a uh, opaque oh. flashing like blue like just around the borders like blue vignette, and then yeah. when your last like bar of life, it should start blinking red. You know, For sure. Player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that is an awesome idea and uh, fairly easy to implement. So that's one. It's really good because I I've thrown in little hints here and there, so I already have a system for that. But the, a matter of doing it with a with a vignette, uh, that that is an awesome idea. I, I mean, this game essentially is is very visual, right? And oh, yeah. and with it being so visual, you're gonna want to be able to make it to where it doesn't impend the gameplay. But yet, let's like if this is the screen, you want to at least surround it and not just be right in the center because then it takes away from everything. So subtlety is what we're kind of leaning towards with that. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. So here's a, a question I have for you in regards to this game. How different has the game become comparative to how, like, like what was it like before versus how it is, is turning out, you know? Yeah, um, I think it's gotten a lot better uh, as a result of me getting better as a developer, uh, getting feedback from people, and 
you know, I should have a third thing, but those are, those are two reasons that it got better. Also just investing more time in it. But I mean, oh yeah, I made some strange design decisions when I first started, like the game was in a square tunnel at first and I, I doubled the width of it. Cause my, one of my big inspirations for this was Star Fox. Oh, so good choice by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Similar ish play field. It's very different. Cause it's like you said, like it's a tube shooter for sure. But uh, yeah, making the game wider, it just gave, you have more room to maneuver and things like that. Uh, also, I mean, I got a little better at the graphics side of things. I, I just, I got so many great ideas from people. Like I know the, the robot voice talking, that actually came from my sound guy. And I started putting that in and it's like, well, what can I do with it? Oh, I can make, you know, bars glow crazy colors whenever he, the robot speaks. And, you know, what, what else can I do? I got glowing bars. Oh, I can make enemies pop in after he speaks and he'll, he'll talk about the enemies that show up in the game or the, the health bonuses or something. Right. Mm -hmm. So the ideas just kind of keep building and uh, yeah, iterating uh, helps things a lot and just trying to always learn. So I actually had a, a question that I also was going to, uh, to ask you after I had an opinion from my friend that's coming by tomorrow. But uh, so I noticed that in the, the early access version that you, you were allowing me to test out, uh, I can just pick and choose any level that is there, right? Is Was that intentional or are you going right. to let players unlock each level? So the feature to unlock levels is already built. Um, that's that's one I would love to hear from the community. I, I, I had built that and I was going to implement it. I kept everything open for testing purposes. Okay. So if I want to, you know, skip to level 32 and make sure that the uh, the end game little screen shows up, I can do that and it's a you know three minute test for me as opposed to having to play through the entire game so uh yeah that's kind of the reason it's it's unlocked right now but uh yeah locking things down is is not hard at all okay and uh when do you think this game is going to release i know you're aiming mo ultimately for steam <laughs> and ucs but do you have a day in mind or or a month or a period or what are you looking at yeah so with you talking about release on the VCS or like complete? It's released. It's done. I'm maybe doing a few bug fixes and walking away. Let's say VCS, and then oh. also answer the same question for complete, like everywhere. Gotcha. Uh, so VCS. Mm, I'm. I've always said between September and November, and there's there's a couple little things that scare me, and I might be scared of nothing, but like getting the leaderboard set up. I know I'm competent and capable of doing it but i've never done it so i gotta figure all that out right um making controllers work on a linux system without like a, an extra interface i've i've tried with ubuntu and like never quite got it to work but if you use anti micro x everything all, all lines up right so the controllers there's, there's a few things and i'm a little bit of a perfectionist so just agonizing over like i want it to feel and play really good right so those are kind of the three big things. So for me, I'll have a much clearer picture once uh, my VCS shows up, but I'm still going to say, you know, I, I'd say November or October to you, but if it goes to November, possibly early December, oh, I hope that's the next question. <laughs> Actually, so our, we just got hit with the 10 minute timer. Uh, oh, okay. So we will unfortunately have to end this soon. So I am going to ask you two more questions and then I'm going to give you an opportunity to tell people where they can find you uh, and, you know, any closing remarks. Now, I was using the modern controller for the game. Uh, and the question I want to ask is, is there, do you have access to a classic controller and do you have intentions of using this uh, for that game? Okay, so we'll, I'll brainstorm this with you. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting on a dev kit and I'm hoping that that shows up soon enough. My game will work with that because I mean, it's only, it's got a special ability button, a shoot button. There's a UI toggle button that doesn't really matter and a pause button. So it needs three buttons. Okay. I already, think... got, you, already got you covered. Got so, me covered. Hemp, if you can kind oh, of. Oh yeah. So you got all four of them there. Yeah. That's your pause button, button, your A button and your B button. Then you got your home button and then you got your back button for whatever reason. And then you also have the rotary dial. And then you can also have your up, down, left, right. It's an eight directional joystick. So, so you have plenty of things to, to poke around with. Okay, but I got I got to follow up. So uh, double tapping a shoulder button on, on a modern joystick will make you do a barrel roll in the game, which is good for deflecting enemy stuff like that. Would a quick double twist, do you think that would, would work? Would that? Oh, yeah, dude, I would, I would love that, actually. Because like you could, 
you know, you're you're going left, right, left, right, and then roll left, roll right. I, yeah, I think that'd be great. Okay, I think that would okay. Be amazing, personally, uh, I think I can do it then. What do you guys in the comments think? I think that would be absolutely awesome. For those who are also familiar, there's a game on the VCS called Thrustlander that takes advantage of the classic controller. And for those who are very, very used to playing that game, I think also this could complement it in the same way. The things that you can do with the rotary dial for certain games are limited. Uh, like there are a few that have taken advantage of it, like the Atari 50, and of course, uh, Danger Scavenger. You can use it, you know, to, to rotate your rotate your character, but it also limits some things you can do in the menu. Um, I can play Siggy. Uh, fart from Melisina uh, with this joystick um, and a few other things. So it has its uses, but the best thing that I can recommend that when it comes to development, I want you to treat it as if you are dealing with an NES controller because that's essentially what you, you have is you have a start, a select, an A and B in a directional pad. The only additional adage here is that you have a rotary dial. Yeah. Well, I guess and for additional directions, but that's neither here nor there. You're only going to be going left, right, up, and down with the joystick, I would imagine. Yeah. So, uh, I had another question, but I forgot what the question is. So, <clears throat> to try to help engage the audience, um, what is something that you want the audience to do in the chat below uh, as they're watching this? What's something? What's some input that you would want for for the people watching this video? Yeah. Um big things i mean i i would love people to get their hands on it but i don't want to diminish atari sales so right <laughs> uh what just from looking at it um if there's any visual changes that would be fairly small to be made uh let me know um anything yeah commentary on the soundscape would be appreciated part part of my mind is like I would love to just convert it all to Atari sound effects or, and get like that real vintage soundscape, but uh, in, in due time, of course. Here's an idea. Why not add a classic mode that just completely swaps out the sound effects? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not even that attached to the modern ones, but yeah, it wouldn't be that hard to do. What else is there? Uh, yeah, just from looking at it, if it, if it appeals to you, uh, sound off down below for sure. If, uh, yeah, anything that you'd want to see changed, let me know. Um, I have not done anything in terms of like toning down the visuals. There's a low intensity mode in the options, but I think I'm going to have to work with Atari to just have right on the store page, say, you know, uh, photo sensitivity, seizure oh, yeah. warning, that type of thing, right? What about, I would definitely suggest that for sure. I mean, you already have one, uh, I'm pointing as if people can see Build. it. Yeah. <laughs> you already have one in it. Uh, what about for color blindness correction? You know, like you maybe a filter that'll adjust the colors. Is that an That's, option? Yeah, I uh, am not super savvy on the, uh, you know, theory behind that. I put in a monochrome mode. So I know it looks pretty good because I played it in, in grayscale. Right. But uh, yeah, I think that kind of filter would enhance the experience for, for people, for sure. All right. And we are coming up on our last four minutes of the recording before it forcefully kicks us out. So I want to take this time real quick, uh, for off, obviously, to thank you for, for coming out here. And I also want to ask, where can people find you? What, what, where can people follow your content? And you know, where can they pick up your game? Like, where, where are you putting it uh, all over? And, and yeah. you know, where, where are you going to be at? Basically. For sure. Uh, three best ways to reach me. Uh, number one, I'm going to say the Atari VCS Discord. I got a little page there for Superstar Shooter 16. They were kind enough to give me that. Uh, second place would be YouTube. Uh, you can check out my devlog videos. And if you want, uh, you can try and reach me on Twitter. I'm slightly less active there, but I, I used to post tons and tons of stuff on Twitter. Okay. And do you have any other planned games in the future? Uh, yeah, um, I got so excited when I saw that uh, Atari acquired Berserk, so I, I would love to make a game like that someday, or like a twin stick shooter. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, it would be good. I know a lot of people on the Discord absolutely love Berserk, by the way. They went Berserk when Atari got it. So, yeah, it, all, all puns intended, of course, but what is a, uh, are there any closing remarks that you want to say to the audience, or maybe that you want them to take away from this? Uh, now is your time. You have two minutes. The floor. I have two minutes for the floor. Okay, so uh, just that a quick rundown. Superstar Shooter 16 is uh, retro-inspired. It's an on-rail shooter. Um, 
I'm trying to go for retro sound effects, uh, somewhat retro style of graphics. It's built in the Unity engine. Uh, I've been working at it for three years, probably going to continue at it for about another year in terms of development, but we'll be launching on VCS with a really nice polished uh, early access version of it. That'll be fully playable and, and enjoyable when it releases. I'm um, that, by the way. So this is a thing if you check on my steam page i'm not planning to change based on what's there but if i'm told to do differently i'm going to fall in line and, and do whatever i'm told to do okay yeah all right and were there any other closing remarks you have 60 seconds um yeah just feel free to reach out on uh the atari vcs discord uh if you want to chat about uh, anything related to the game, send me a message. Uh, uh, I really want to make something that uh, the Atari community is going to enjoy. And uh, I'm, I'm open to feedback. The demo that's out on Steam definitely needs some work based on what Kaz just said, because it's, it's a bit too hard to, to get into, but uh, it's, it's fully playable. It works. It's in pretty good shape. So I'll, yeah. agree. I'll definitely agree. Well, Jamil, we are coming up on our last 45 seconds. I want to say real quick, Thank you so much for this opportunity to interview you and test your game. Uh, guys, I have been Kaz Danazan with Crash Productions, and you've been watching the Atari Dev Space. Stay tuned for the next one. See you later.